Hey, Brendo, Steve here. And Larson. Yeah, welcome back to Going In Rock Count Out. Larson, you're the intro man for Count Out. Take it away. Well, you already kind of did part I of set you up. I gave you an ollie oop. Welcome to Going In Rock Count Out, the only wrestling top 10 show found here at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Larson. Anywhere the Going In Raw podcast is found, including CastBox. We've got a great partnership with CastBox. Yes, we do. Check the app out. It's fantastic. Yes. Um, we can also be found at Patreon at patreon.com slash Stephen Larson. All sorts of contribution tiers. Awesome rewards associated with those tiers. You see those stickers on uh, Steve's laptop there? Yeah. You can get those. These guys right here. They are part of the Friendo Care Package, which can be yours for one, just one, mm -hmm. monthly, one contribution of $20. Yes. You can change your contribution. You can cancel entirely. Absolutely, yeah. Just do it once. You get that comic book, poster, uh, signed postcard, another sticker. Yeah. Um, we're also at Pro Wrestling Tees, ProWrestlingTees.com slash going and draw. You can get that shirt right there Steve's wearing. I find it funny. I find it funny that yeah. I've got this t-shirt. It's great. we got a bunch of other designs there, Golden too. Golden shuffles. Awesome as well. <laughs> Check it out. I feel like I feel like on Pro Wrestling Tees, my next one is going to be another uh, Baron Corm Corbin homage shirt. He can't help but continue to be the going in raw wrestler. Like I know it's probably going to be Kyle O'Reilly this year. I know it's Trent last year. But I kind of feel like Baron Corbin is the legacy going in raw wrestler. Well, he might be the default until he doesn't <laughs> exactly, prove. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, so yeah, all good stuff. Anyways, uh, we put up a different video, um, another video in conjunction with this one, top 10 reasons why Roman Reigns should be the top guy in the WWE. This all stems from this uh, perhaps debate that might be going within uh, creative over there at WWE. Yeah, but who to be, who's going to be top guy? Who's going to beat Brock Lesnar for that universal title and thus being crowned top, top guy. guy? It's all a bit ridiculous, but it is kind of fascinating. You've said sometimes before that often the backstage shenanigans in WWE can be more interesting when, than, than the, the product, televised product, yes. Than the product they put up there. And this is really interesting. Um, and so be sure to check out the other video. This one, we're focusing on why... Braun Strowman should be the top guy in the WWE. We're going to get right to it with number 10. 10. He's huge. Yeah, Vince likes large wrestlers. He's so huge. The words he's huge take up more than the the little box thing, the lower third box. The lower right third, there. yes. Look, in comparison to Alexa Bliss, he's literally sitting. Uh, he's not even sitting on a bench right there. He's sitting on his butt. He's sitting like uh, uh, in uh, with the cross leg style. Yeah. And she's standing. That's actually not true, but it could be. Anyways, he's huge. Vince loves big men. Yes. Uh, there is going back to the the carnival roots of wrestling. You know the big giant men pulling off great feats. Yeah. Nobody wants to see a small guy like Finn Balor be universal champion, I'm Larson. Sure would, Nobody would, wants to see a little tiny guy that. like that. He should be over there on 205 Live. Give me the eight-foot Braun Strowman as the top guy. What, what You're looking at other top big men. Yeah, I mean, depending on your definition of, of huge wrestlers. 5'11 um, and up. Well, then, I mean, if I put a half-inch lifts in my shoes, I could be a huge wrestler. Oh, you could definitely be Hogan was billed at 6'9", six, 6'8", six, something like that. Yeah. 300-something pounds. Yeah. He was huge. Big man. Diesel. Yeah, huge. Seven-footer. Oh, yeah. Um, Andre. The, yeah, I mean, that's your prototypical guy right yeah, there. Yeah, but he was Andre. a champion. That's kind of what I was getting at. Sure he was. Champion. Sure he was. Who's um, a bigger name in the history of wrestling, Andre or Diesel? Andre. <laughs> um, Vince put the belt on the great Kali. Yeah, great Kali, Yokozuna. He was large. Yeah, like Yokozuna. Yokozuna. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Anyways, yeah, Vince loves big men. And there is a special appeal, you know, to having your, your you know, the guy, your face guy. Oh, be Sid. Be a, yeah, he loves Sid for some reason. Some well, he was reason. tall. Yeah. I think Sid's like 6'8". Really tall guy. Tall oh, 6'9". He said, ooh, man. Yeah, and he's, yeah. I mean, physically speaking, the man he's huge. He's huge, but the, what I, I think what separates Braun from just being tall or large is that he's really athletic for a man his size. He's doing Those drop kicks, drop kicks. He he's fast. Sprint around the oh, ring, deliver fast. shoulder tackles to Kevin like, Owens. Yeah, it's like he's like a young version of the Big Show. Yeah, he's not the like giant. he's just plodding around the ring throwing uh, uh, hands. It doesn't hurt to see him walk. Like no. with a great Kali, it literally hurt to see that dude yeah, walk. Yeah, yeah. Braun's not there yet. He might be eventually. Maybe he's thick. I know that's a lot of that's a lot of wear and tear on the dude. joints, though. But he didn't have like a big old belly. I know that's still you know? he's carrying a lot of weight. That's still yeah, a lot of wear man. and tear on the back and the Ooh. knees. Yeah, 
especially if he's working 250 shows a year. That's yeah, just a lot of... He'll get a bus eventually. Number nine. Number nine. He's relatable. He just seems like a good dude. He seems cool as, as crap. Look at his Instagram. I don't know if it's on Instagram or what. I found this picture of him with a giant sandwich. I'll get rid of this little lower box right here. i get rid of this right here and that right there. Look at that little sandwich. That's a huge sandwich. I mean, a big sandwich. Anyways, yeah, man. Absolutely. Put that back up there. Massive sandwich. Anyways, he seems like a decent guy. Um, you've referenced his appearance on the Stone Cold uh, oh, podcast where he yeah. comes across as, as well spoken, humble, yeah, um, and and just all around a decent fella. It's yeah, it's odd to have like just a big, giant, hulking monster guy be so damn relatable. Mm -hmm. I'm not a big guns guy, but he's on his Instagram, have looking like he has been having a good time out there at the shooting range, shooting all sorts of guns because he's, apparently he's a big gun guy. Totally cool. He's out there doing his like shooting his guns and stuff. Seems like it'd be fun just to kick back and hang out with Braun Strowman. I yeah. have, I've yet to watch the guy. They just put up the the ride along. Oh, with him and uh, Alexa Bliss. Yes. yes. Again, it's probably I don't know, but it's probably going to be more. A lot of their little interactions of the mixed match challenge. He comes off as very relatable. Yeah. You know, I think she's kind of cute. Come on, it's great. Oh, he's great. Number eight. Eight. He wants to improve. Going back to that Stone Cold uh, podcast appearance he spoke on there, I believe, about uh, his desire to keep learning. I put a picture of him and Roman up here because he also mentioned recently on the Sam Roberts podcast, I believe, that uh, he wants to... He, 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 he enjoyed, credited the feud with Reigns in terms of, of it providing an uh, excellent learning experience for him, how to work longer matches and pace himself. You can also point to his work with Big Show and mm -hmm. Kane mm -hmm. as uh, obvious... Sort of, you know, when you're out there in front of 15,000 people or 10,000 people, whatever, you might not think it, but those are obvious ways to get him some real good practical experience yeah. learning from similar big men. Yeah, and just, just, just go back to his solo debut after the, the brand split a couple of years back when he took on James Ellsworth. Mm -hmm. And think how much he has grown as a competitor oh, yeah. since then. Oh, yeah. In the span of time. a year and a half, two yeah. years. It's incredible. The dude has to be like a sponge, man. Yeah. I guarantee you that stuff that he's doing with Kevin Owens right now, shoulder checking him all the time. Number one, I'd love to see that as a feud. Oh, heck yes. Um, but number two, I would imagine that he's probably learning that kind of stuff from Kevin Owens. It seems like a very Kevin Owens thing. I could mm -hmm. be wrong. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we've been reading up about the different producers that are working with you know, in the various um, on the various matches yeah. on the various matches, and so you know he's obviously learning a lot from that as well. But uh, the guy does seem to 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 actively want to be a sponge, yeah, in the business, and it shows in his performance. I wonder who he travels with. I don't know. I have not seen any Instagrams of him. He's traveled with Bray Wyatt. When was that? Twenty. He, he at least talked about it during oh, twenty eighteen. Okay, okay. Um. Trying to see if there's any other articles. I have not noticed on his. Uh, oh, on, a, on any of his social media? No, I have not. I mean, some of them, some of the WWE people, they can't help but. Uh, let's see if I can look up Braun. I don't know if this is. Is this his? No, this is a 2018. He said he usually travels with, with Bray Wyatt. That's interesting. That'd still be super interesting. He says this is a with an uh, interview with CBS Detroit. He says our friendship is going to go down forever. Bray is a very very close friend of mine. Say look at that. There you go. And this, you know, Bray, he's been wrestling for a while. Plus, he comes from a wrestling family. Yeah. Um, there's probably picture. a <laughs> again relatable. There's a picture on Braun's Instagram of him just chugging this giant beer. He's his biggest beer you can get. Oh look at that. Oh oh. I'm gonna put this picture up on there. Again, from his Instagram, Braun with a little doggy right there. A little doggo. Hi, doggo. Anyways, all sorts of great stuff. Look at that. It's got a McDonald's in the background. A little tiny smart <laughs> car, it looks like. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, man, give me a break. The most relatable guy on the roster. Heck yes. Oh, there you go. Perfect for you. Oh, out there at a at baseball Yankee game. Stadium. The most American relatable thing you could do, go to a baseball game. Anyways. There you go. Yeah, but no, he does seem to want to improve, and uh, he's said as much many times in the past. Number seven. Seven. He's humble. Now, this picture right here is from his greatest Royal Rumble win, but this was moments after he had the most gracious and appreciative smile on his face while looking at uh, giving his uh, gratitude towards uh, one of the uh, ambassadors from the Saudi uh, royal government there. Um, or the sports authority, whatever they are. Um, 
And uh, he does he does really seem like he's a humble guy. Like we've heard this also in interviews and podcasts and whatever um, that he did. He really does seem to have a good head on his shoulders. Yes. Um, he seems like a real humble guy. Yeah. No, you're right. OK. Nothing to add to that. Well, I mean, I, I was looking up to see. I thought I read something else about him uh, uh, learning stuff from somebody else. Oh, OK. OK. Into that. No, that's fine. That's it. I remember yeah. reading, reading something backstage where there was a bit of, I think. If, it, if I remember correctly, there was a bit of heat on him because of his push he was getting. Mm. But I think people uh, under, or saw and understood how much work he was putting in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he wasn't carrying himself. Right, yeah. Like he was full of himself. Yeah. And that he was willing to learn and, and, and be humble. And that people were respecting that. Yeah, well, if they, they want to give him shit, you can make them humble. You can like, get these hands. Break your back and make you humble. All right, moving on. Number six. Six. Unlimited ceiling. Braun has an unlimited ceiling. I put him here with this picture of Brock Lesnar to show a guy who has reached his unlimited ceiling. Let's see if it's unlimited. You can't really reach unlimited, it. Unlimited, yeah. Yeah, it's super unlimited. But he's also taller than Brock. I think his ceiling is higher than Brock Lesnar's. Oh, yeah. He's what taller. He is so taller. So he would have so to have a higher ceiling. Literally in the physical sense. Um, absolutely. Anyways, yeah, no, look, man. Give me a break. His ceiling is absolutely incredible. He's still learning. He's still young. He's still only been in the business for not that long a period of time. Yes, hold on. I, I found the, the quote I was looking for. It's from an interview with Pro Wrestling Illustrated. This is what he had to say about... Oh, no. Oh, One I thought you were Anyways, screwed. it was during an interview with Pro Wrestling Illustrated. He said, yeah, there was a little bit of animosity about the push, but because he worked hard, willing to put his body in line, was willing to learn... He won everybody over. He put some heads in toilets, man. He was like, you he don't like do my that. push? I'll push you in this poo-poo. I know. No, he didn't do that. Anyway, this duker. <laughs> Unlimited ceiling. He only tapped uh, 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 a little bit of what he can do. There's a lot of untapped potential in Braun Strowman, not, term, not just in terms of in the ring, but in terms of character work. We've already shown that he could be a monster heel. He can do comedy. He can be be a, a hugely popular face. Mm -hmm. He can do it all. Yeah, but there's so many more facets to him as a personality that have yet to be explored. Mm -hmm. I feel like um, so much more. I feel like he can probably do in the ring in terms of storytelling. Yeah, that he's going to be, you know, discovering new things he can do himself mm -hmm. throughout the years, and mm -hmm. it's going to be a joy to see. Yeah, absolutely. Number five. Five. People like destruction. Heck that's, yes. That's Braun's thing, man. That's why Brock Lesnar gets a pop at all is because he, he destroys people. He suplexes them a lot. But Braun does better destruction. He pulled down all that stuff, that whole scaffolding stuff. That whole scaffolding he thing. He turned over an ambulance with Roman Reigns inside. He's attempted murder on several occasions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's broken a lot of things. Remember when he lifted Elias' card and, and like, yeah. couldn't get him away? Yeah, no. He's He plays up. They've been playing him up. Um, or they have... From time to time. It's like a horror movie villain. Exactly. Kind of like a lovable horror movie villain. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. But then he always seems to like, he always seems to, are there any horror movie villains that go after the bad people? Like anti, anti villains? Maybe. Anti heroes? Whatever you'd I call them. Anyways, because like, you know, when he came out of that dump truck, he was going after the Miz. Miz and the Miz Taraj, and that was shot just like a horror movie. Ex yeah, exactly. But he was not the villain. Right. But no, people do like destruction. That earlier shot we had with him in that grappling hook, and he brought stuff down, the, the big set down. Um, all sorts of examples. Destruction, get these hands. Get these hands. Exactly. People putting people in garbage. It's great. Pushing people, Roman Reigns while strapped to a gurney uh, off yeah. like a yeah. parking platform. Again, attempted murder. Um, that's well, that's a, more like this assault. But here's the thing. It's pro wrestling. Yeah. It's pro wrestling. We don't want to talk. We want action. Action, action now. now. We want destruction. Hands. People love hands. Exactly. Number four. Four. He's made for that media crap that they have to do. Look at yeah. this. They did that little short film elf spoof. And didn't he do the uh, the reading from Juno? Yes, that's right. And it was fantastic. And he, he kills it every single time. He has an opportunity that it will be only... A matter of time within the next 12 months to 24 months or 12 to 24 months, one or two years before he shows up on Fallon 
Colbert. Yeah. That fat British guy who does the karaoke that James I can't stand. James Corden. Corden. Yeah. Corden. Oh, what about Conan O'Brien? So oh, I love Conan. He's yeah. great. Yeah. He's great. Conan could do a lot of fun. I can imagine Conan getting in wrestling gear, yeah. being all awkward and funny. Yes. It'll be great. You will see a lot yes. of Braun Strowman on late night TV. I know. I can't wait till he wins the Universal title and starts making media appearances on the late night talk shows or even the morning talk shows. Yes. Have him on the Today Show. Good morning, America. Remember how much he of a, is charming. Remember how much of a bummer it was to see Seth the next morning on Good Morning America with his arm in a sling? <laughs> and he just knew. Oh, you mean Finn? Finn I'm sorry, Finn. Yeah, yeah Finn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he just knew. They're taking that thing right off you tonight. Yep. They're doing that. You can see he had lost face. It was sad, even though he was the universal champion. And everybody was dumping all over that red belt. Yeah. But no, he's, dude, Braun is going to be, he is going to be, he's going to, he might be. So Cena's already done it. Has Cena hosted Siren Live? Yeah, he's hosted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Braun could be the next guy on the active roster to do Mm -hmm, that. I can mm -hmm. totally Mm -hmm. see that. Um, if they if they're looking for someone that can be a crossover mainstream star, Braun's the guy. I know. Yeah, absolutely. he's got the look. He's got the personality. Mm-hmm, yeah. He's got the comedic chops. As oh, we've yeah. seen. Yeah, he just needs uh, additional platforms like SNL, maybe some small roles in movies mm-hmm. until he gets that 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 break in a larger feature film that can catapult him into f- proper true mainstream crossover star. I mean, look at how long it's taken. I don't know how old Braun is, but look at how long it's he's taken. 34, he's 34. He's 30. Okay. Yeah. Six years is a long time. Cena's like 40 or so. Mm-hmm. And he's just now really getting his major Hollywood legs under him. Mm-hmm. The rock just signed him to, he's producing a movie with Cena that's going to, Cena's going to be in it. Correct. Rock needs really needs to be in that too. Oh heck yes, man. Anyways, uh, where's our buddy comedy with The Rock and John Cena? That's gonna happen. It it's needs to happen. Gotta happen. Number three. Three. He's well rounded. Yeah, you I mentioned about this that. earlier. Yes, yes. Yeah. he can do comedy. He can be the monster heel. He can be the lovable monster face. We see him do. I'm happy you use that still because that segment uh, is when we really first, I think, saw comedic Braun. Kind of a breakthrough moment for Braun, and he killed it. Yeah. He, he can actually sing, too. Yeah. His shoot voice is actually lovely. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It seems like everything they've, they've, they've put in his hands. Hands. He's, he's done to his fullest and has done it well. It's, that's one thing that we could have put on here that we didn't. We've got two more entries, but we didn't put it on here. Is sort of the, 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 the inverse of one of the entries for Roman, which was creative has dropped the ball with Roman. Oh, he's been, Braun has been more or less booked perfectly. Yeah. Which is so bizarre that they booked him perfectly and Roman Reigns. Well, I mean, I don't want to put the burden solely on creative or talent, but it's 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 it's, and I don't want to speak or say that Reigns hasn't necessarily done all he can with with what he's given, because I'm sure he has. Um, I mean, what can you do with the promo that you know that Vince writes that says "suffer and suck attach" and you can't do much. You with can't that. do anything. With you that. can't do much with that. Yeah. Um, Braun has been given stuff that plays to his strength and every time he's hit a home run. Whereas Roman, I feel like, hasn't always been given stuff that plays to his strength and therefore he's struggled. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree absolutely. With Braun, they have put him in so many scenarios that make perfect sense for him. Very creative stuff. And I feel like maybe there just isn't the pressure with Braun. Maybe, you know, I was like, well, give him this, see how he'll do. Give him this, see how he'll do. Whereas with Roman Reigns, it's, we have to get this right. We have to get this right. Have him say suffer and suck it ass. But no, I also think it's some, uh, it, it, some of it is lack of vision on their part because they don't know what Roman, they want Roman the character to be. Yeah, top guy, that's what they want him to yeah, be. Yeah, I know, that's it. So it seems week after week, his character was changing and he was trying to conform who he was as a person, as a performer, whatever, into whatever role they needed him to fulfill for that segment, that show. I would that think, feud. I would speculate that's the inherent difference in their creative is that with Roman Reigns, they, they, they said, what do we want for Roman Reigns? We want him to be top guy. Okay. Well, let's which is this nebulous exact, subjective exact, thing. Exactly. Whereas we're, what do we, what do we want Braun to be monster heel? All right. Yeah. That's, that's a fairly concrete thing compared to top guy. There's yeah. a whole lot. There's, there's so many variables out of your hand when you're trying to create a top guy. Yeah, exactly. Um, that you can't just say, we want to make Roman Reigns a top guy with Roman Reigns. They're starting with the premise which is the the result that they want? Yeah. With Braun Strowman, they're just. They're I don't think to, they really understand what his ceiling is or what he can be to the company because he can be a, a wealth of things, including top guy. 
But I don't think they're worried with making him that. I think they're just worried with how can we best effectively use him? Let's come up with stories that play to his strengths. You've said this. With Roman Reigns, it's we need him to be the next John Cena. How do we get him there? And that's not the that's not no, how you no. start. It's the it's the backwards way of doing it. What yeah, you're exactly. supposed to do is, is is invest time and creative energy in developing characters, let them develop their brand, get a following. And from that, you will get a top guy. Yep. It wasn't as if Cena was instantly pushed upon his debut as top guy. According to him, he was almost fired at one point. Yeah. Um, he came uh, uh, upon a character that connected with the crowd. And organically, he became top guy. Same yep. with Stone Cold. Yep, exactly. Um, and that's if you want longevity, if you want true, in this day and age, Hogan, that's an outlier. He was pushed mm-hmm. as top guy. Yeah. I mean, that was the goal from, yeah. from yeah, the yeah, inception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the, the industry is so different nowadays. Oh, big time. As we see with Reigns, that, that can happen. Yeah. So you need these, the, your top guys to be developed organically. Daniel Bryan. Mm-hmm. You know, he, he, unfortunately, he got injured before he could really establish himself as top guy. We'll see if he can bring that back now that he's been cleared. But he's a character that developed organically that people loved because he was a great performer and he was a great character. Mm-hmm. Reigns has never been given that opportunity to develop in such a way. Nope. Never. It's, always, it's been from sh- breaking up at the shield, you're in the main event. Yeah. With no development along the line. Exactly. Yep. Yep. You need a character. And so he doesn't really have dimension because it's just your top guy. Yeah. That's your character. Your face of the company. Meanwhile, look what happens with Braun. They've given him all sorts of different, interesting, a variety of things to do. And he's developed into a well-rounded character. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Number two. Two. He's been the constant. If you go back, if you go back to like the build to SummerSlam last year, and when he started doing the real monster stuff, when they launched him up there, and ever since then, especially with his feud with Roman. Uh, you know, he's come back around to Brock sometimes. He's always been kind of the glue for Raw. Like, we never thought, we didn't think for a second that they were going to send Braun over to SmackDown at any moment. We kind of think that Roman and Braun are the two constants for Raw mm-hmm. in terms of those guys are going to well, stay there. I'm saying Seth. Uh, even Seth, I think, is kind of fluid. Um, he's got a shirt that says Monday Night Raw, and he's not going anywhere. Okay. Uh, that's a good point. Um, but with Roman... Let's face it, Raw is, they consider, they consider, Vince considers Raw their premier show, their A show. Yeah. That's why that's a show that would be on Fox Network and SmackDown would be on Fox Sports 1. Yeah. Um, and so Roman, given that they want him to be top guy, of course, he's going to stay on top show. Yeah. Braun, on the other hand, is their marquee well, the, attraction. Well, yes, that's, what, that's yeah. the word Vince uses a lot when speaking yeah. about talents in terms of them as draws is attraction. Yeah, Exactly. And so that's where Braun is going to be. And throughout all that, throughout the, the, the different levels of, of Roman being over or not over, Braun has always been that constant thing that's there. You can always rely on him for kind of whatever you want to do with him as long as you give him something to do. He's constant. He's the glue. Well, not only that is he constant in terms of his presence, but I think he's consistent in terms of his performance. Yeah, exactly. He's always excellent. Yeah. Everything you give him, he will do. He'll hit a home run with. Yeah. And you can count on him to do that. Yep. Night in and night out. That's what you need out of your the guy. Yep, consistency. And the number one reason why Braun Strowman should be the face of WWE, he's really over. Yeah, he He is. He is massively over. Look at that smile. He is so supremely over right now. And he has been for a while now. Yeah. The bottom line is, when he wins that universal title, and it will happen. The, the roof is going to explode off that, that building. That crowd is going to go absolutely crazy. And in the end, don't you want your top guy to be popular? Cheered. Don't you want him to be cheered? Don't you want him to be over? Not booed. Cheered. No, because if, if he's being booed. That means people don't like him. Exactly. That means people will only buy a ticket to see that person get beat up. Yeah. Not to win, beat up. And that's fine if you're trying to be a bad guy and you're trying to draw a heel heat. But, but if you're the one, if you're the guy who's trying to it's supposed to be ending every house show with a win with your hand raised, you don't want the booze are not the reaction you want. You want cheers. This past Monday on Raw, Braun Strowman power slammed and pinned Kevin Owens, who was the most over guy in the building that night. 
and the crowd still cheered. Mm-hmm. I think they would have cheered a little bit more for Kevin Owens. They definitely would have booed Roman Reigns. Oh, yes. But Braun Strowman got a massive pop for pinning the hometown hero. Uh, Braun Strowman is supremely over. Yes. That's why he should be yeah, top I mean, guy. I mean, <clears throat> I'm, I, I understand Vince has a vision of who he wants to be as, as his top guy, and in this case, Roman. That's the extent of his vision, though. I know. That's you the know? problem. It's like, I want... A 1971. You want bullet I want, car. I want bullet car. However, I also want, I have a vision of that car, but I also want it only to cost me in pristine condition around ten to $12,000. want a, a, a fuel-efficient engine inside. Oh, that yeah, still, I, That yeah. still gets the, the performance that you want to feel cool. Right, exactly. Yeah. You want zero to 60 in about three seconds. Oh, but that if, I don't care about. Honestly, that's the one thing I don't care about. I don't care about speed. I do not like going fast in cars. I haven't got what's a po- ticket po- in literally 20 what's years. What's the point of having bu- bullet cars? Looking cool. Fast. Looking cool. You're not going to look cool if you're peter- peeing through the neighborhood or down the freeway at 45 miles an hour. I can tell you that. Slow lane. You've never heard the lyric, two miles an hour, so everyone sees you? I have, but that's not what you're supposed to do on the freeway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, That's when you're going 20 years. I haven't, I haven't had a speeding ticket in 20 years. I've had one since then. Oh, no. Anyways. That's one thing I brought back from LA. I'm a fairly aggressive driver. Yeah, I know. Sometimes, and then sometimes you like look away. That's me looking at my mirrors while you're like tailgating. No, you're actually pretty good at not looking at me. Hilton does that. Lacey oh, no, does I don't. That I don't. I don't look at my passenger. Hilton at all. and Lacey both look at me. If I'm not looking uh, straight ahead of me, I'm looking at my mirrors. Yeah. I always like to be fully aware of what's going on around me while I'm driving. Yeah, no, me too. But sometimes I feel like you tailgate, and while you're looking in the mirror, well, I need to know what's going on behind me. Dangerous situations. Nah. Yeah, you don't really need to look at what's going on. I haven't gotten in an accident since, that's been my fault, since (laughs) mid-90s. And that's like basically when I got my license. Yeah. Well done. Good job. Anyways, yeah, no, he's supremely over. um, And yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's why I brought Oh, I was going to say, you know, you can't necessarily be at all times reactionary in terms of who you determine as top guy. Oh, I was going to say you need a path. When you, you you said Vince has a vision for yeah. what he wants his top guy, and that's Roman Reigns, and I was like, well, yeah, I want to, I want you know a bunch of stuff in my car, yeah, but I need a path to get there, and it's real unrealistic. Yeah. For example, people are upset. Like I understand why they're not putting the WWE title on Rusev right now, even though he's massively popular. Yeah, popular. Sure. You want to see if it's sustainable? Yeah, yeah, I totally get that. They should be doing more with Rusev than what they're doing, but nonetheless, they're not going to put the top belt on him just because the the Rusev Day uh, thing is over right now. In six months from now, if it's still over, then yeah, you think about it. You think about changing plans to get him more involved in the main event scene mm-hmm. and whatnot. Braun has been uh, on the upswing for the last year at mm-hmm. least. Yeah. And right now he's reaching, he's going to be approaching his peak mm-hmm. in popularity. And and, and I he, sometimes you got to call an audible. We saw with Daniel Bryan, the same thing happened. Oh, yeah. They had these plans. And I understand what Vince was thinking. Mm-hmm. Batista was a money, money guy. And during his first run, yeah. Orton, you know, he's he's he, he he's a thirteen time champion. He thought that'd be a blockbuster main event for WrestleMania thirty. But then you get Daniel Bryan over here, who's insanely popular. Yeah. You can't you can't deny that yeah. at a point. Yeah, wait, see if it's sustainable. But once you get the idea that it is, you gotta ride it. You gotta take advantage of that if your if your goal as a company is making money. Yep. You gotta go with what you think is gonna make you money. Mm-hmm. In that case, is Daniel Bryan. And if it's a choice coming up here pretty soon between Roman Reigns and Braun Strowman, and Braun Strowman is on the rise in popularity, and Roman Reigns is still getting booed by 60% of the crowd, you go with the guy that's getting cheered because he's going to make you money. People are going to buy that merch. People are going to go to house shows to see Braun defend that title. That's yeah. what you got to do. Yep. I'm not saying be, be completely reactionary where Braun gets a pop for two months, you put all your belts on him. No, you wait it out, you build them. See if it's sustainable. Once you see it is, then you take advantage. That's what you do. Yes. Yep. Very All right, good. good boy to end the show. What a great episode we just did. Yeah. We're just fantastic people. Really, we should be top guys. We're, well, our- we're, we're the top guys on going in raw. Nice. Anyways, that's it for the show. Thanks so much for tuning in. We appreciate it. Until yes. next time, we'll talk yes. to you guys later. Thank you very much. Bye.